Hey everyone, welcome to our first ever weekly playthrough video of the Quest Calendar. Today we're gonna to be going through March 29th through April 4th. That's gonna be days 88 through 94 as we get ready to go through not a daily dose of dungeon crawling, but a weekly recap of RPG. And we're gonna start the week off on Monday as we leave the marketplace. So you approach the church at dusk in order to avoid drawing attention. Once you get near, the foot traffic is non-existent. It's too quiet for comfort. Everyone in the city must have heard the rumors and is avoiding this place. You walk around the perimeter and scout for evidence of what could be going on. You can't get a good look inside through the colors of the stained glass, and you hear nothing coming from inside. You must get in to investigate. Churches are usually open, but this one has been shut down and boarded up. And we're going to have three options as to how we try and get inside of the church. We can try and pick the lock on the window by rolling a d20 plus our dexterity. And you can use the locksmith reminder if you have that. We can try and smash the door down by rolling a d20 plus our strength. We can try and smash the window and crawl through by rolling just a d20. So over to the tower for our first roll of the week here and looking at the choices and then comparing it to my character card. I'm going to pick option A. I'm going to try and pick the lock on the window by rolling a d20 plus my dexterity, which for dexter is a plus one. And I don't have the locksmith skill, but I have the lockpick set, which will allow me to add a plus two to whatever the roll on the d20 says here. And we only roll a six, plus all those modifiers, comes up with a nine. So we check our results, and if the result is 13 or less, the lock doesn't seem to budge. It must be rusted from the rain and weather. You need to try another approach you haven't tried so yet. So back to the tower we go. Let's go right down the list and go to option B and see if we can smash the door down. So we're going to roll a d20 plus our strength, and Jasper has a zero for the strength, so it's just whatever the die says. And that result's much better. Come up with a 17. And when we look at the results, you'd think that 17 would have been a really great roll, but you need to roll at least a 16. So we just managed to kick the door down. It says you take some time to try and remove some of the boards that are nailed against the door. You don't have the right tools to do this, so you're unable to get all of them off. You then throw your weight against the door and smash it open. Hopefully you didn't alert anyone. All right, so we figured out a way to get into the church. Let's see what happens now that we're in there. So now that we're inside, our eyes take a minute to adjust to the low light available inside the church. A chilling draft comes in and it's obvious this place hasn't been heated in a while. You take a few steps and feel something brush your leg. You turn around and feel it again, but you see nothing. The next step is harder to take as you're getting caught up in something. You reach for your weapon, but you're stuck. Then you see why. You stepped into a large spider web and are getting wrapped up in it. We have three options to try and get out of this spider web. We can try to break free from the web by rolling a d20 plus our strength. We can slowly untangle ourselves by rolling a d20 plus dexterity. Or we can try and use fire to burn the web by rolling a d20 plus our intellect. The ability reminder for today is danger sense. All right, so we're here to the tower. Let's look at these options again. So we can try and break free, slowly untangle ourselves, or use fire to burn through. Jasper is going to try to use his dexterity here, and we're going to try to slowly untangle ourselves by rolling the d20 plus our dexterity, which for Jasper is a plus one. And I'm also going to go ahead and use one of my nimble slots here, and says that up to three times per rest, I can add plus two to any dexterity roll. So we're going to add plus three to whatever the d20 says here. So today we get another six, plus three, Still only nine. And when we look at the results, much like yesterday, this isn't gonna be good enough. If the roll is 13 or less, you twist and pull at the web, you try and step out, but there's too much of it and it's getting all stuck together. You're not able to untangle yourself. Try another option that you haven't tried yet. So back to the tower and let's try and get ourselves out of this web again. Let's go ahead and try and break free by using a D20 plus our strength. So hopefully this is good enough. We roll 16 plus our strength, which is zero. So we stay at 16. And it looks like we should have just tried this in the first place. If our roll is 12 or more, we rip and cut through the web and we're free and able to move about. And now that we have untangled ourselves from the webs, let's see what Wednesday has to offer. All of the wiggling and writhing in the web seems to have attracted company. At least you know what likely caused the disappearances. 
You hear the clicking of legs and the clanking of fangs as they creep across the walls and approach you. So it looks like today we're going to have to fight three spiders, and we're going to do that by rolling a d20 plus our attack and then damage for each separate spider. So to the tower for our first conflict of the week, we're going to roll our d20 for our attack, and then Jasper's damage is 2d6 plus 1. So we'll have to roll each of the d6 individually because of the limited space in our tower, but we'll get through it. So we're going to start out with spider number 1's attack. Can't get much better than that. So we roll a natural 20 plus our attack is 25. So we put a real big number there for the attack. Let's see what we can do with the damage for spider number one. We're going to start out with a two. And then to that we're going to add another two plus one gives us a five for the damage on spider number one. On to spider number two. Here's the attack. Six plus five gives us an 11 for our attack. And then for the damage on spider number two. And we'll keep that and we'll start out with what we're gonna call a six. And our second die is another two plus one gives us a nine for the damage on spider two. And finally for spider number three, here's the attack. Fourteen plus five gives us nineteen for the attack, and then for the damage on spider number three. Start out with a three and add another three plus one gives us seven for our damage on spider number three. So let's check out the results and see how this compares. For spider number one, if our attack roll is fourteen or more, then we hit the spider. So we did because we rolled like twenty-five, and for the damage, if you hit the spider and your damage is five or more, which we did then the spider dies. On to spider number two. If your attack roll is 15 or more, then you hit the spider. We did not. We only rolled a nine. So if you missed the spider or the spider did not die, the spider pinned you to the ground with its legs. If your armor is 14 or more, and looking at our character card, we can see that our armor is 16. So we're going to check the second one here. If your armor is 15 or more, reduce your health by one, taking us down to 16 health. And lastly, spider number three. If your attack roll is 13 or more, and it is because we roll a 19, then you hit the spider. If you hit the spider and your damage roll is six or more, we rolled a seven, then we have killed spider number three. And after our fight with the spiders on Wednesday, let's see what we're gonna do on Thursday. You make your way through the base level of the church and head to the upper floors. Everything is covered in webs. It seems impossible that just a few spiders could have done this so quickly. As you wind around the stairwell, you see a large sack stuck to the wall. It seems the spiders were keeping a meal here for later, or perhaps they already ate. So today we're going to try to cut this sack down and investigate to see if what's inside is still alive. We're going to do that by rolling a d20 plus our intellect, and we can use the investigator ability if we have that. All right, so over here at the tower, we are going to roll a d20 plus our intellect to try and see what's inside of this spider web sack. I do not have the investigator ability, but I do have a plus two to my intellect, so plus two to whatever the d20 says here. And we all roll a seven plus two, just a nine. And checking the results, if the result is 10 or less, you cut the sack down from the wall and press your ear to it. You don't detect any sign of life. There's no breathing, no heartbeat, no movement. You decide to leave it there and venture forth in hopes of finding someone alive to rescue. And not finding anything inside of the spider's web yesterday. Let's see what we're going to do on Friday. You find a door near the top of the stairs and enter. It appears that you found the attic or a storeroom. There's a lot more webbing up here and several more sacks that could be other people. You go to each one and cut them down. Hopefully there's something alive up here. So today we're going to investigate these sacks now to see if what's inside of them is alive. We're going to roll a d20 plus our intellect, and again you can use the ability reminder of investigator. Alright, let's see if Jasper can hopefully save someone today. We're going to roll a d20 plus our intellect, which is plus 2 to whatever the d20 says here. Well, at least so it's not a 9 today. We roll an 8 plus a 2 gives us 10. 
So when we cut the sacks down and we try to see what's inside, if the result is 9 to 16, you cut down the sacks and tear through them. You find lots of dead and dried up husks of bodies. In one, you even find spider eggs. You immediately take to destroying them all by stomping on them. No matter how much you may have loved life and its creatures, these things are an abomination. You manage to find one living person that you can rescue. It's a male dwarf and he has no energy to speak or walk. You carry him out safely and return. Make a note on your character sheet that you saved one person today. We managed to rescue one person yesterday, so let's see how we're going to end the week. So cutting down the web stacks have disturbed the spiders that are in the room, and they're coming for you. Today we're going to be attacked by three more spiders. We're going to roll a d20 plus our attack and then damage for each of these guys. Alright, so more spiders are coming for us. Same thing as last time, we're going to roll a d20 plus our attack, which for Jasper is a plus 5. Then we're going to roll our damage, which is 2d6 plus 1. So let's start out with the attack on spider number 1. There's that 9 that we've been rolling all week. Roll a 9 plus a 5 gives us 14. So roll a 14 for the attack on spider number 1. Let's see what our damage is going to be. Start out with a 2. Plus 4 gives us 6 plus 1 for a total damage of 7 against spider number 1. And now for the attack on spider number 2. Sixteen plus five gives us a twenty-one. And the damage. Start with just a one. Add to it. Another one gives us a two. Plus one is three. And now for spider number three. Attack first. With a seventeen plus five for twenty-two. And now we go for the damage on spider three. Start with a five. And add to it. Another 5 plus 1 gives us a total of 11 for our damage on Spider 3. Alright, so let's check out these results. For spider number 1, if your attack roll is 12 or more, then you hit the spider, which we did by rolling 14. And if we hit the spider and our damage roll is 6 or more, and we get a 7, the spider dies. On to spider number 2. If the attack roll is 14 or more, then you hit the spider, which we did by rolling a 21. If you hit the spider and your damage roll is 5 or more, then the spider dies. We only rolled a 3 there. So, if we miss the spider, or the spider did not die, then it bites your arm. If our armor is 18 or more, and it is not because it only is 16, we're going to reduce our health by 2, leaving us with 14 health. And finally, for spider number 3, if our attack roll is 17 or more, then we hit the spider, and we do that by rolling a 22. If we hit the spider and our damage roll is 5 or more, and we absolutely destroy it by rolling an 11, then the spider dies. So let's take a look at our character card. After an entire week's playthrough of the quest calendar, where are we? Well, our health has only been reduced by 3 over the course of the entire week, which is pretty good. We still sit at 14 health, our armor is at 16, attack is still plus 5, and our damage is still 2d6 plus 1. We only used one ability slot this week, and that was the nimble one that failed us anyway. So we mark off one of those as used, and we're doing pretty good. We still got four pieces of gold, we've rescued one person, and we've destroyed a lot of spiders. In my item slots, I still have the God's Blessing, I still have one health potion, one combat tonic, and five meal rations. And that's going to be our week. So, Jasper is now an Eldritch Knight Exterminator. We are taking care of rats and spiders. How'd you guys do over the course of the entire week? Did you rescue any more than just one person? Did you guys take a bunch of damage against all of those spiders? It was a lot to fight over the course of the week. And I guess you could have burned yourself with some fire, and there were a couple ways that you could have been injured. How are you guys making out? Let me know down there in the comments. Make sure you guys subscribe and like today's video. Come back next Sunday, and we'll see how another week of the quest calendar goes. I'll look for everyone then.